Milwaukee, at the start of the 20th century. Every year, brutal winters on Lake Michigan froze dock workers out of work. But freight operator DJ Nugent had an idea. Why not temporarily hire out his stevedores to local factories and warehouses until the spring thaw? It caught on, and an industry was born. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, other industry pioneers, like Chicago's Sam Workman, built upon this new employment model, moving into clerical work. And it expanded further in the 1940s, as Russell Kelly started Kelly Services in Detroit, law partners Aaron Scheinfeld and Elmer Winter launched Manpower in Milwaukee, and another Chicago businessman, Clifford Stivers, opened his first SOS branches. The paradigm was, whether it was Manpower or Kelly or Alston, which is now called a deco today, you sent women to the office and men to the factories. As the industry grew, so did the business challenges. There was competition, to be sure, but there were also issues everyone struggled with, like government regulation that no single operator could tackle alone. I've been involved in some way with the industry since I was nine years old, and that was when my dad started a staffing business in 1962. That was around the time that there was some thought that maybe the industry needed some kind of a body that would help them. Advancing the interests of the industry with legislators. I realized that my voice or my actions alone were much less powerful than the voices and actions of many. In 1966, after a further attempt by Congress to regulate the emerging business, industry leaders came together at a Washington, D.C. meeting. John Smith, Labor Pool's young attorney, participated. There were about a dozen temporary help companies present, and uh, after uh, two days of meeting, we decided to form a trade association, which was called the Institute of Temporary Services. The main key players at that time, John Husick of Employers Overload, John Frank, who was the executive VP of Manpower, and Bill Bullard, who was the outside counsel for Kelly Girls. And then also an important contributor was Helga Tarver, who had a service in Washington, D.C. Oh, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of my part in it, and I'm proud of the industry. I served on the board for 20 years. I was president for a year. Now I would say I was a pioneer, but when I was in it, I wouldn't have probably said that. I just loved the business. There was one individual in particular who was uh, a real leader. That was the first general counsel for Kelly Services, Cedric Richner. And almost by himself, he, he represented the industry before state and federal governments. So he was a, a, a huge factor in our, in our success. At the start, the new association was almost entirely volunteer-run, as they worked to establish their influence and organizational identity. In 1971, ITS changed its name to the National Association of Temporary Services, and later that year, scored its first legislative victory, defeating a regulatory bill before the House Education and Labor Committee. By the end of the decade, the temporary help industry was exceeding a billion dollars in annual revenue, prompting an increasing role for its association. I was fortunate enough to join the staffing industry when it was starting to take off. We only had a staff of three people, and I became the executive vice president in the end of 1983. The association needed to have its own legislative independence, okay? We were very reliant on, on the national companies to do all our legislative work because we didn't have the wherewithal to do that from a lobbying standpoint and so forth. So in 1988 and then in 1989, um, I hired Richard Walquist and Ed Lenz. I was, I think, the sixth employee hired, given the title vice president. 
and that meant that I could wear as many hats as Sam could put on my head. I was his uh, deputy CEO, uh, I was in charge of chapters, I was in charge of IT technology, uh, in addition to doing legal legislative advocacy. I was the first in-house lawyer for the association. Our central mission is to ensure that uh, our members have a fair, competitive marketplace in which to operate. Regulations will be part of our world, and our job will be to make sure that they don't impose an unnecessary burden on the industry. A particular one that uh, comes to mind in the early 1990s was uh, a proposal by uh, Senator Howard Metzenbaum of Ohio and Congresswoman Pat Schroeder of Colorado, who promulgated the first national temporary worker protection law at the federal level. And I personally testified against it, but I think it was the behavior of our members, if you will, the services that they were providing, uh, and the way that we were able to communicate that to policymakers that I think ended up leaving those legislative proposals on the uh, drawing room floor. They never saw the light of day, fortunately. There have been many attempts to limit our customers' usage, uh, our ability to service. For the most part, those have all been thwarted through the legislative advocacy uh, of ASA. Without that, um, there wouldn't be much to talk about and we wouldn't be doing this interview. Several years ago, we were dealing with some harmful legislation in Massachusetts. The legislator who had proposed the legislation at the beginning had a very dim view of our industry. Now over the course of a year, we along with our members who were essential in this effort, worked with her, educated her. She got to know the industry. We took what could have been a very devastating piece of legislation and worked with her to improve it it was a win-win for everyone. You know, staffing firms benefit a great deal by being a part of ASA or from ASA. And, and a big piece of that is, is what we've all just gone through with the Affordable Care Act and the fact that, you know, ASA was leading edge of going out and talking to government agencies about how that law would impact our industry. And, and frankly, I think that saved us millions of dollars in the industry. One of the issues was, how long should a temporary assignment be, or can it be, before it falls into the category of long-term versus variable hour? And uh, we had a long, long discussion with the top officials at Treasury. We were never able to pin them down to a specific date, but the concept that temporary help was a special breed of cat that needed to be addressed in the regulations was established and made it easier to comply with this uh, important law. The 1980s also saw the association move across the Potomac from Washington, D.C. to Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia, where ASA is headquartered today. The association launched its first magazine, Contemporary Times, and it started a tradition of honor, the Industry Leadership Hall of Fame. Oh, I was so pleased to be one of the inaugural recipients of the Leadership Award in 1985. It was very nice to be considered with that group. They, they were really strong leaders that did a wonderful job. To be acknowledged by your peers is something that um, you'll always treasure. To know that the, um, the time and effort and work that, that I put in to try to move the industry ahead had been recognized by my, my peers. As the 80s turned to the 90s, the industry continued to boom and expanded into a growing number of occupations and employment arrangements. And more name changes seemed to be in order. The association had successfully introduced and promoted the term staffing, and in 1999, rebranded itself as the American Staffing Association. By then, Richard Walquist had succeeded Sam Sacco as CEO. And in the years that followed, ASA's mission and staff grew significantly. As the industry has developed and evolved and the association has helped in that development, that evolution, uh, we've expanded into public relations, helping to understand the contributions that the industry makes to people, to organizations, and to societies. 
I've always been a firm believer if you gotta really toot your own horn to get out there and tell the story before somebody else figures out what the story might be. And so one of the things I'm really proud of that we did during my term is uh, we created the job and then hired Steve Bircham to fill it. I was hired to improve public perception of the staffing industry. We began our work by polling the public about their opinions about the staffing industry and determined which messages were most effective in changing public opinion. And by pressing and pressing and pressing year after year after year with those sorts of messages, we successfully improved public opinion about the industry. All of that together has changed the conversation from it being something that, you know, sort of only people who can't get a permanent job do, to in fact it's a career of choice. The other very important pillar for this association uh, today and in the future is enhancing professionalism. Certification grew out of a need by our members who said, we need to master all of this body of law that is currently being churned out by the federal and state government. And our certification program covers federal law and employment law on all 50 states, and so it's quite comprehensive. And that sends a powerful message. We're the good guys, we are pro-employee, and we are changing the economy. Our annual convention, now called Staffing World, has truly been the cornerstone event in the industry every single year. The programming at Staffing World has changed in leaps and bounds. We've gone from teaching members how to sell services or how to recruit services to now talking to them about leadership, innovation, change, engagement with employees. We're bringing in some of the most highly rated, coveted keynote speakers in the general business world, not just the staffing industry. And I think that that's been so great to watch that evolution. I never miss a convention. In 2001, the convention was in New York. And the dilemma was people got scared. They didn't want to come. And the ASA, and ASA came through, even though they were going to lose a lot of money, a lot of people backed out. And it probably was the most memorable convention that we ever had. The people that came had an extraordinary experience. I remember being there and having the hotel staff say to us, if it wasn't for you holding your conference here this week, people wouldn't be working right now. And when you say that to an industry that provides jobs for people, that's what warms your heart. New York needed the convention, and, and ASA was there. It was amazing. The industry is just going to continue to grow. I think more and more companies understand that there's so many advantages. You can really just stay up to date on all the different industry matters by just being plugged into ASA. One of the things we're most proud of is the development of a very robust uh, data and research element. In particular, our ASA Staffing Index, a near real-time snapshot of what's going on in the industry. And it turns out, the staffing industry is a real-time reflection of what's going on in the economy. And today we have Wall Street economists who are following this. Uh, we have uh, university scholars who uh, are tracking it. None of that was available 50 years ago. We have an organization here that protects us during the good times and bad. What one company or one person cannot do on their own, we do together. The power of the team, the power of the association, the power of nearly 2,000 members speaks volumes. We wouldn't have an industry if it wasn't for ASA. We are in such an amazingly different place 50 years from the start. People understand who we are. They understand what interests we represent. Growing recognition by policymakers of the positive role of staffing, that's become more and more clear. In the future, talent 
more than capital, is going to be the most important resource for business and for governments, and we're at the epicenter. And that's ASA's role, to be at the table, to have forward-thinking discussions. We can't predict with certainty what's going to happen, but we can help shape what's going to happen, and that's the essential role that ASA is going to play, and I look forward to that.